everybody and welcome back. A while back, being a fan of Fallout, I went to the Spirit Halloween store and bought a Pip-Boy. Uh, I went ahead and modded it, painted it, put lights in it. And I want to say a big shout out to my friend Zombie for turning me on to this. Well, guess what? Spirits of Halloween store did it again. They made <laughs> the Nuka Cola Thirst Blaster. And it makes sounds. And you reload. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and mod this to match this. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. There's the gun. Looks great. Before we repaint it, we're going to fill in these pesky screw holes. Got my silicone pad and some Bondo, some Catalyst, and mix it thoroughly. And of course, I like to apply with my paper funnel I made here. Load it up and kind of push it forward like a tube of toothpaste. Now I want to get all these holes. The best way to do it is you get the tip right in there and you start from the bottom up and just fill it up. This guarantees a solid fill and no air bubbles. Now the bondo is curing, it's still a little soft. I like to go in with an X-Acto knife and trim off the excess. This makes it a lot easier for sanding when the bondo completely cures. Well, while the bondo is curing, I'm gonna take my medium grit sanding stick here and I'm going to remove the graphics on the handle, those pesky raised letters you can see right there. I'm gonna take the handle off and sand them right off. We'll go ahead and do the same with the Bondo as well. Sand them nice and flush now they're cured. Now there's some deep grooves and we'll get rid of those with some 400 grit sandpaper and a little wet sand with a little bucket of water. And of course I'm gonna get my towels, keep my area dry while I work. Do a little wet sanding. Wet sand the handle and wet sand the Bondo spots as well. And while I got it, I'm going to wet sand the top seam really well and the bottom. Now we're going to take some Bondo glazing spot putty and my metal spatula. We're going to cover the Bondo areas and the sanded spots. The Bondo is good, but it still has a little bit of groove and texture to it. So I'm going to make sure it's nice and smooth by applying the spot putty. I'm going to go ahead and cover the top seam and bottom seam as well with the spot putty. Now they're completely covered, got all the nooks and crannies filled in with the spot putty. We'll let this dry really good. So when you come back with some 400 grit sandpaper, we're gonna wet sand it one more time. Now it's completely dry. I'm gonna do a little bit of wet sand on my spot putty areas. All right, everything's been sanded. Looks great, getting ready for paint. By the way, oh, the cap on the gun comes off very easily, so that's good. We're gonna take this off and paint this separately. We'll make it easy for masking. So we're gonna go ahead and mask off the parts for the red. With the front and back. Now as you can see, I put some tape on the gray areas as well too. I don't wanna paint those, so we're just gonna focus on the red. All these parts are masked. We're we'll gonna be painting the red with Rust-Oleum 2X. This stuff is great for plastics. Oh wait, by the way, before you do that, I like to take some 99% alcohol and a paper towel and just wipe off any unseen oil spots or fingerprints. That'll really affect with your paint job. So make sure you get it nice and clean before painting. Now outside, I'm gonna put on two good even coats. All right, now it's done. It's semi-dry and I always find it's best to demask it while it's semi-dry, while the paint's still soft. Let's go and demask it. All right, now the red is dry, we're going to mask it off. I like using the saran wrap. It's low tack, so it won't damage the paint. Wrap it up really good. Now it's wrapped up. I want to take some frog tape and cover the ends and get wrapped. Now for the shaft back here, I want to make sure I get a really good, nice, clean mask. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Take the cutting mat, lay down some frog tape, and cut out you got a circle template, I'm gonna use the exact diameter and trace two circles, half circles that is. 
take an exacto blade cut them out and we're gonna break this into two pieces so cut this right down the middle i'll show you here lift it up now you get a nice good clean mat look at that do one side brush it down and do the other we're gonna do the same technique for the front use some uh, blue tape 3m again you find it a little difficult to get in there you have a tongue depressor or a stir stick and just reach in there and brush it down and we'll cut some thin masking tape strips because the parts inside the ring are already red i don't want to get any metallic paint on there so i'm going to cover those guys up as well all right it is ready for paint i'm going to use my rust-oleum primer to seal that first let that dry and then go back in with my automotive dark metallic there it is metallic looks great we're going to go ahead and demask it there it's looking good now i put the cap back on i painted separately now for the next step the raised detail the nuka cola we're going to paint that in with some white Tamiya paint and a fine brush. I like the detail that's raised so it's kind of easy to follow with a brush. Just take your time and be careful. Looking good. All right, got both the sides done. Now time to age it with some burnt sienna, raw umber, and some black oil paints. I'm gonna take the burnt sienna and the raw umber and mix them together. I like to use little mineral spirits to kind of make the oil a little bit thinner so it's easy to spread out. As I show you right here, I'm going to go ahead and brush onto the details. Apply it. Don't be afraid to go heavy because you can go back into the paper towel and wipe off the excess. The oil does a nice natural fade. It gives that kind of nice aging. Now, if there's too much in some spots, you can go back in with a Q-tip and wipe it off. That's what's so great about oil paint. All right now it's done, go ahead and take the brush and go through all the nooks and crannies in the place that would naturally hold dirt. Same technique, take a paper towel, wipe off the excess. As for the back detail, these guys are really cool. Are they little vents? I'm gonna make these pop by taking some Tamiya chrome paint and just painting the edges and make them pop a little bit. Yeah, this looks awesome. There it is. The Thirst Blaster is done. Now it matches my Pit Boy. Again, everybody, Spirit of Halloween has so many other cool things you can buy and modify. Matter of fact, you guys seen Punish Props. They did the uh, Ghostbuster Trap and also the, the, the Ghost Meter. It's amazing. So if there's anything out there, guys, do you see that you think would be cool to mod toy-wise? If so, let me know because it would be a blast to do it. Uh, this turned out great. Again, everybody, I have links for all these below the video. If this is your first time watching, don't forget to click the button and subscribe. And while you're at it, go to my website, eviltedsmith.com. Get on my mailing list. And while you're at it, you can go to my shop where I have numerous patterns that you can buy to build your own costumes. Maybe a Fallout costume. Again, everybody, I love Fallout. These are super cool. If you guys have any more requests of things that can buy and mod, please let me know and put in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you back next time right here on the Evil Tet channel.